We're just talking about how at the top, everybody's nice. Mid-level people, fucking assholes, always. So try to get to the top as quickly is a myth. Everybody says, oh, people at the top are fake. No, 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 they're not. No, they're not. No, they're not. People are fake or at a mid-level. But the reason is, is there's a bias in your brain called the liking bias. So to succeed, you have to be likable. And aggression is very dangerous because there's this game theory thing where these scientists in the 60s created game theory, which said, how should you react to another person? And they ran a couple hundred million computer simulations. And the answer is always start out nice unless you're in jail. If you're in a hostile situation like a prison where everybody's a known aggressive person, then you start out mean. But in the real world of business, people ask me how to business network. You know, I teach business networking and, and I've had incredible connections with people. And it's because my first mentors were so nice. You have to be extra nice. Like I was just at Arnold Schwarzenegger's house. Like I saw people are like aggressive to him and he's Arnold Schwarzenegger. He's worth $300 million. You know, he was the governor of the United States. He's friends with presidents. So when you're mean to him, he just withdraws. And so what happens is people that jab don't realize because Arnold Schwarzenegger never gonna take the time to call you out. He already made it. So he'll just back up and be like, oh, great to meet you. And then never talk to you again. And so when you're extra nice, cause you don't know what pisses people off and people are sensitive for different reasons. So I can't tell you how many times when people have observed me doing business network and they're like, everybody's nice. And I'm like, yes, yes. I was just at the game seven. I had floor seats. I was with all these crazy people were there. You know, the, all the billionaires, Sergey Brin, who owns Google was there. They're really nice people. So my advice to you, if you feel like people are mean or something, hang out with the better quality people. High quality people are not mean. I promise you this, but if you ever finally piss them off enough, they're patient, there's an old saying, beware the patient, uh, beware the wrath of a patient man. For example, right now there's a lawsuit, there was a company called Gawker, it just got put out of business because Peter Thiel is one of the most powerful businessmen in the world. He started PayPal with Elon Musk, he's a multi-billionaire VC investor, and he's gay. And Gawker Magazine about five years ago wrote an article about him that outed him in a real mean way, like, guess who's gay? Well, you know what, he didn't say shit for five years. And then when they released a sex tape of Hulk Hogan um, illegally, he gave Hulk Hogan $10 million to sue them. And Hulk Hogan won the lawsuit, $130 million. They're bankrupt, they're done. Cause Peter Thiel's super nice guy, but if you piss him, there was no reason to attack him. They just start, never attack a powerful guy. My four of my first investors was a billionaire. Let me tell you, nicest guy you ever met but don't cross them. And that's why my advice in business networking, start out nice, 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 nice. If they're a little mean, go nicer. Don't do, it's an epidemic in LA. I've seen it, it's more in LA than any city. You know, I travel a lot. I don't see it as much in L London. I see it a little bit. London people are kind of passive aggressive. Um, but don't start out mean. It, it, it goes against game theory. And here's what happens, like attracts like. So the second you're an asshole to start out with, all the assholes congregate around you and all the good people scatter. And it's nasty. And then all your, and then here's what happens. They call this a downward spiral. You're an asshole to people, so people, all the good people leave. So you're left with assholes who then do bad things to you and then you become more of an asshole because you're like, I gotta be an asshole because I'll ask people sometimes. I'll be like, some people will come to my house, you know, and I'm like, they'll start out with a jab. And I'm like, let me get this straight. Um, why would you come and start out with a jab? And they'll be like, well, there's a lot of people. You don't know who you can trust. And I'm like, yeah, you're creating your reality. When you don't trust people and you act that way, all the good people leave and you're left with the dregs of society. So unless you're in prison where you got to act tough to start with, just chill. I, I don't know where this thing comes from, but I will tell you in business, if you want to be broke, I mean broke, be an asshole. I can tell you I have met some of the most interesting people in the world, some of the most power, I, you know, I just recently, you know, was the most interesting person I've met recently in the last month or two, I did a thing with Rihanna. You know, she's probably the most popular person in the world right now in terms of people loving her and having 60 million or 50 million social media. She's so nice. She's incredibly charismatic um, and, and she's nice. In fact, she's so nice. Now, that doesn't mean she's always nice, but, her go-to move is really nice. 
in my experience. And, and she's Rihanna, you know, she's got hundreds of millions of dollars. And I often wonder, I'm like, why is she so nice? And this other fucking person pissing me off. I don't know. But that's why I know it's part of her success. Part of her success. So don't ever listen to people that tell you people at the top are fake or mean. They're really not. And some of you were asking me if I think it's a front. Well, maybe. But it's a damn good front because I've known people like that for a long time. And they're nice for a long Mark Cuban was over here, the billionaire, you know, from Shark Tank. You know what I thought was so funny about Mark Cuban? And it's when I say nice, it's not just like you should kiss somebody's ass. I'll give you an example. Mark Cuban comes over here. So he's made $3 billion. Um, you know, he's on Shark Tank, owns the Dallas Mavericks NBA team, pretty much done everything he ever wanted to do. He asked me more questions than any broke motherfucker that ever comes here. So I have to think. So he's humble. He'll come here and he'll be like, hey, Todd, I wanted to ask you some questions. Last time I was with Elon Musk, I was at the Game of Thrones premiere. Elon Musk is uh, the guy who started PayPal. He started Tesla. He's the only man alive to have started three billion dollar companies simultaneously. He was asking me all these questions about Snapchat. He was like, hey, Ty, what do you think I should do with my Snapchat? And I was thinking, this guy's got $14 billion. He asked me more questions, and you know what most people do? They come up and they tell me everything they know, which is fine. If you go in a room and you talk about everything you know, you come away from that room with the same information you knew before. But if you ask questions, like Elon Musk, that's why the rich get richer too. The rich get richer because they're more curious. Everybody thinks the rich get richer because it's all capitalism. You know that's been disproven, it's been bullshit disproven. The world has gotten wealthier, not just the rich have gotten richer. Everybody's gotten richer. But the rich get richer because they ask more questions. Mark Cuban asked me eight hours of questions here. And I'll have some motherfucker come here who got a $2,000 a month business. They don't ask any questions, they jab. They're like, oh, well, why do you do that? I'm like, I just get quiet, go play basketball. I don't care. So my advice to you is have some respect to people. Like I said, I don't kiss Mark Cuban's ass or any of their ass, but at the same time, look what he did, you know? He, he, he did something that's hard. And so I end up walking away. And even that last thing with Elon Musk, I was like, shit, I didn't even learn anything. Cause he was, at, I said, this guy's so smart. He got me talking the whole time. He already knew everything he knew walking in the situation. He got me to tell him all my Snapchat tricks. He walked away not only wealthier in knowledge, but he can apply that to Tesla and all these companies and make even more money. So I always ask myself, all these broke fucking people, why aren't you like Elon Musk? Ask questions. Don't, no one wants to hear what you know. People think they're so fucking smart. Let me tell you, people who think they're smart, they ain't never been around smart people. I got lucky when I was young, I got put in a, in a, like this thing in, in the United States, in uh, California for high IQ kids. Well, it was so high IQ. I have a high IQ, but it was so high IQ. These people were the smartest people in the world. So I never thought I was that smart. I didn't realize that this was the top 20 kids in the United States that I was around. So I always had like a complex, like, shit, I'm not that smart. Well, that's a great attitude. I'm glad I learned that. I never think I'm smart. And sometimes I meet people that just think they're so smart. I'm like, really? Warren Buffett reads eight hours a day for 60 years, and he made $70 billion. He's smart. Stephen Hawking understands the nature of time, the cosmological and ontological you know, imperative. He's smart. People are smart. They think they're smart because they read three books once in a month. Come on now. Be a little more humble. Be a little nicer, and the next thing you know, your bank account goes up. Your circle of friends is way better people. Life gets better, you're happier. So, like I said, very few people will listen to this advice, but some of the best advice I ever got. And it's a win-win situation. Everybody's nicer. And I look for that, boy. I, the, no, and, and I got these kids. You know the nicest people I've met that are young are these kids who came over to my house. They're 18 years old. They bought an app for $4,000. Now they're making 200,000 net a month at 18. I got a kid on my Snapchat wrote me, and he, you know what? He asked me a lot of questions. That's why I do a lot of stuff with young kids. Like fucking, I didn't even try, but a lot of young kids follow me. This kid's 14. He was making 6,000 bucks a month from his app. He has a cartoon app, number 50 in the world. He asked me some questions. He follows my stuff. He listens. Now he makes $30,000 a day, a day, net. He's making a million dollars a month at 14 years old. A kid in the ghetto in Atlanta. And you know what? He asked more questions. 
All these other fucking people think they know everything. I'm like, really? Well, this is why I tell people I think they know everything. Prove it. Show me your bank account. You know shit about business? Let's see. You're such a nice person. You know who's a nice person? Mother Teresa. When she was 12 years old, she took a vow of poverty, chastity, and uh, oh, what was the other one? But she basically pledged her life in lifelong service to pick up kids. She picked up 100,000 people off the streets of India, dead and dying. She's a nice person. People compare themselves to bullshit people. They go, oh, I'm nice, Ty. Compared to who? <laughs> Compared to your dickhead friends? Maybe you are. Compared to Mother Teresa? No. How about Martin Luther King Jr.? You know, he took a bullet. He took dog bites to fight for something. All these people that are aggressive, I'm like, why don't you go be aggressive in a real cause? There's 40 million starving kids in India. If you consider yourself a nice person, get on an airplane. It costs about $700. Go there. When I was, you know, I, I went to India and I worked on a leper colony. People's faces were falling off. Nobody wanted to be around them. I was like, I'm going to try being around these people. And I don't consider myself the nicest person in the world. But I know a lot of people that consider themselves nice, but they have nothing to back it up. If you're smart, it'll show real fast. If you're smart, you'll know like 10 or 12 languages. My grandpa's superstar, one of them. He knows 14 languages. So if you're smart, back it up. If you're such a nice person, show me how you're changing the world. Everything else, money and action talk and bullshit walks. And there's a lot of bye, 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 bye in the world. So sometimes I got to shut down people. I start out nice with people. People fucking start. I'm like, let me shut your ass down. <laughs> Mark Cuban asked a question. He got $3 billion. Show me your bank account. Why are you so confident? People are so confident. I'm like, where did you? I have a 67 steps program. About 150,000 people have gone through a program where I wrote down and recorded 67 things I learned from my mentors. And one of the most important ones is where does the pride come from? And this is an epidemic in LA. People are so proud of what they haven't done yet. I'm like, how can you be proud of what you haven't done? If I walk in a gym and I'm super overweight, I'm not gonna go over to the people who are lifting weights and are in great shape and go, oh, step aside, uh, it's time for me to use it. And they're like, well, we're, we're here first, man. We're doing, we're killing the game. And, and you go, well, in five years, I'll look like you. Nobody wants to hear it. Do it, and then you'll get respect from people. Earn respect. And that's the number one pe reason people jab. And it's because we grew up in a society in the last 40 years where parent, everybody wins a trophy in school now. Parents all tell their kids, and it's great that parents tell their kids that they love them, but you know, it's better to compliment people on what they did. And it's a real problem, I'll tell you, where society has messed with women. Um, parents and society compliments girls always on what they look like. And when you compliment people, on certain thing, they'll move towards that. They'll gravitate. If you compliment women like, oh, you're so pretty, you know, they do that to little kids that are like five-year-old girls. I, I live with the Amish for two and a half years, and they have a major thing against complimenting looks. I've never seen it. They do not allow that. No family compliment. If the daughter does hard work, they're like, you're such a hard worker, just like the sons. They don't say, oh, you're so pretty, and you're so strong. No, forget that. And that's why I said women end up getting tricked by society and women are proven that can do just about anything mentally than a man. Well, mentally the same, women and men. Physically, men have more testosterone, so they're stronger. But society doesn't really need strength anymore, you know? And, and so if you're a woman, don't get pride from your looks. It's great. Everybody should want to be healthy and shit like that, but accomplish something. Something. Not everybody has to be Elon Musk. You don't have to be a billionaire. And not everyone has to have Mother Teresa, but I have a rule. You got to be able to tell me what you did and I have to understand it because a lot of people will be like, well, I'm really nice. And I'm like, what'd you do for society? If you can't give a tangible thing, then it doesn't count. It doesn't count. You know, people sometimes ask me, they're like, well, Ty, are you materialistic? You got Lamborghinis and Ferraris. I'm like, maybe I am, but I have more people reading books in the inner city than any human has ever had more than the white house, more than any initiative. So I try to do something for society. I'm not perfect. But I can list a tangible benefit to society for me being on the planet. And I think everybody should have that. Then you can have a little pride. You know, Sergey Brin uh, or Larry Page, the Google guys, they have a tangible benefit. If they weren't here, the world would be a worse off place. And I think everybody, big or small, wealthy or you know, famous or not famous, should have that real pride coming from something you did. Something you did. That's easy to understand. That's the litmus test. 
So leave a comment below. Tell me what you did. Something tangible. You know, like it could be, I went on a mission trip. I built houses. I, I knew a guy who went down and took a year off after Hurricane Katrina and just built houses for free. You know, just a regular guy. That's a tangible thing. And if you can't do that, then don't call yourself nice. You know, if you think you know a lot about business, show me the money you made in business. Bank account deposit. If you can't do that, then just be humble and be like, I don't know shit yet. And then go out and find the Elon Musk and find the Mark Cubans and get them to give you advice. You know, don't be cocky. And then eventually you'll become a master of the universe. That's what I call it. Oprah Winfrey, she's a master of the universe. She doesn't need to walk into a room and go, oh, she can talk. She earned that shit, you know? She's the wealthiest, I think the wealthiest woman in the world. Wealthiest black woman, black woman. for sure. But that, you know, she made a billions of dollars. I'm gonna listen to her if I walk in a room and if somebody comes in there yakety yak yak, I'm gonna be like, shut up, please. Do it, then you can be proud. Anyway, that's my little rant. Uh, I forgot to comb my hair, so if I look retarded, I'll have to blur out my hair. But, to this room, no jabbing for the love of God, verbally. Thank you. I'm gonna record another thing and bore you guys to death. <laughs>